Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an excellent positional game to share with you from the final round of the 2023 Tata Steel Masters. On the white end in Ishgiri, and he's playing against Richard Rapper. Opening-wise, it's an open Sicilian. If there's one piece to pay special attention to throughout this game, it's Giri's Queen Knight. This is the MVP of the game. We have a classical Sicilian, Richter Rouser. And with g6, the dragon variation. g6 is very committal in this case, with there already being pressure on f6. Black is prepared to play this position with several weaknesses in his camp, and is also prepared to play in gambit style. I'll highlight a line where white could potentially go after a pawn. So let's see these weaknesses. White goes ahead and captures the knight. And after black takes away from the center, we have doubled pawns, an isolated pawn, and many holes in the position. Now, of these two defects, it's mainly the isolated pawn that grabs my attention more. I could foresee the doubled pawns one day undoubling, this pawn being exchanged for white center pawn. But the d6 pawn, on the other hand, it's probably just either going to be around as a half-dead pawn or just drop off at some point. Additionally, by definition, an isolated pawn the squared is on is a hole, and so too are the squares in front of it. d6 is the main one that has my attention. It will act as a great springboard for several white pieces, or it can act as a springboard for several. All right, from here we have Bishop b5, a little pressure on c6, provokes bishop d7, some other defense is asking for trouble. Now we have bishop to c4. Did you catch that? There was a little finesse there with Geary's king bishop. Why are we going first to b5, allowing black to develop a bishop and then falling back to c4? Wouldn't it have been better to just go to c4 straight away? Well, first of all, this bishop isn't really the most brilliant developed piece. It would actually prefer to still be on home base. From d6, it's actually interfering with the black queen. She's no longer there to watch over the half-dead pawn. This difference matters. The location of the queen bishop matters. Let's see why. Bishop g7 follows. And now in comes knight takes knight. Two ways to recapture, but you can't take with the pawn in this case. You would be dropping d6. Black must capture with the bishop. And what does this mean? It means d6 is still a hole. Okay, let's back up for a moment. Suppose the bishop went to c4 straight away, and then bishop g7. And then knight takes knight. No problems in this case for black. You simply recapture. This is defended. And d5 is repaired. No longer a hole. Okay, white would not be capturing the knight in this case, but this little finesse by the king bishop is paving the way for a knight takes knight move, and black will have to recapture with the piece rather than a pawn. Okay. I know at the start of the video I pointed out the queen knight being the MVP, but I want to at least give a little credit to the king bishop. It does play a supporting role. Okay, from here it's bishop g7, and in comes knight takes knight. So where is a line where the d6 pawn could fall? Right here. If this knight chooses to go to b5, black has to be prepared to play in gambit style. The d6 pawn is a goner. Castles, you know, pick your favorite way to take. Black will have compensation. Has the bishop pair. F5 is nearby. The bishop will be liberated. The unopposed uh, bishop will be liberated. This is the ideal placement for those unopposed pieces on the longest diagonal. Anyhow, in the game, we have knight takes c6, bishop takes c6. Both sides castle, 
and a perfect spot for the queen. Opening up d1 for a rook, observing all sorts of pawn breaks. She's really excellent on d3. From here, rook to c8, knight hops into d5, rook e8, c3. So one day it is going to happen where this guy sees the world, f5 is in, and this structure is now around to neutralize it. Okay. From here, bishop d7, bishop b5, and I have a pop quiz for you. How would you react to white's last move? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, this is a positional test, positional question. In the game, it is bishop to c6. This is a very important moment in the game. It's important not to just allow the exchange of the light square bishops. This knight will find it much easier to stick around on d5 and go unchallenged. In playing bishop c6, Black is saying, you take me, because I would like to repair d5. There's a fight going on over the d5 square throughout this game. So, in this position, to highlight, if we had the exchange of bishops, and then maybe some of you may have been thinking further with this capture, well, this queen takes here, and there is no idea to grab the b2 pawn, for example, because white already has some tricks, rook b8, could be met with knight f6 check, and there goes the rook. White is doing very well. This is an ideal, uh, this is a, a position you'd see uh, in a book highlighting superior minor pieces. Okay, the white knight is superior to the bishop in this case. We have bishop c6 in this game. From here, bishop c4. Geary could have repeated, but he's clearly going for more at this point. We could have had these bishops going back and forth, but he's playing for more. Rook f to e1. In comes f5. Bishop gets out of the way. Not really so comfortable having the queen constantly babysit the bishop. So she's now freed up. We have some exchanges. White's able to take with check, get out of the skewer or the pin. Uh, queen d2, bishop e6, and where are we training our pieces? On the weak squares. d6, d5. This really does feel like a two-result position for white, maybe even dating all the way back to g6 because of these weaknesses on the d-file. From here, some flight square for the king, h3, small improvements at this point. B5, one day looking to maybe extend the scope of the bishop, shooting for an, a B4 advance. Queen F4, Rook C5, once more offering the trade of light square bishops. Bishop E5, Queen E4, and now in comes some play on the king side. With F4, G4, and we have two different pawn breaks. It's still considered around even. At this stage, um, what allows for these moves at this point? I mean, it's very committal to play g4 at this stage. Or I should say weakening to the king position, of course. But what, what allows white to uh, play such a move? I believe every white piece is superior to blacks in this case. The, the main one is probably the queen post. It's pretty nice to have the queen right on one of those four center squares and for her to be stable. The knight is excellent. Bishop is excellent. I really do feel every white piece is better than blacks in this case. Also, g4 is a, is a move that's potentially ready to question the stability of the dark square bishop. Okay. Ideally, white would like to maybe control some dark squares. Okay. From here we have h6 and bishop to d5. Computer's even pointing out that white could go ahead and initiate the exchange on e6 with the idea to continue playing on the king side with h4, looking next for g5. Let me just highlight uh, a way that black could go wrong if the play continued like this. White is already winning with this idea to play g5 kick the bishop away. 
And now we have this pawn, which has been pinned. And there's a way to exploit that with queen d4 check, followed by queen takes rook. White will be winning a rook. Okay. Anyhow, it's not all forced, but it says you could take the light square bishop straight away. Bishop d5. Bishop takes bishop. Knight takes bishop. So how to continue from here first? Queen is kicked back. Black has slowly improved with those last two moves. It's still around even. In comes now f5. The knight is stable on d5. Can't really be challenged anymore. And now a new square is being opened up for it with f5. G takes f is best. Uh, is an only move, actually. Uh, some other moves, such as queen e5, white could simplify the position in the following way and be winning a pawn. There are other lines, but this is one of the simpler ones. Entering a rook and pawn ending where white is up a pawn and has an active rook. This is a winning position. So, queen e5, not a good idea. Black plays in the best way. Knight f4. No recapture, no time for in-between moves either. Knight takes queen would be hitting with check. Notice with this last capture, another positional detail. Isolated pawn on h6. What was this pawn doing from g6? It was guarding h5. h5 is now a hole. And this knight is looking to hop right to it. Gets there with tempo, hitting the queen. Knight h5, check. Five options for the king. Four of them are draws. Black picks the wrong one. He steps up. He missed an idea. There's a tactical shot here. I think this is the one that feels most natural. You know, if it's some bullet game. Uh, you kind of step up, you want to stick around controlling some pawns. Uh, maybe you don't want to come back here because of checks. Maybe the pawn falls and then there's a problem on f7. Okay, it seems a lot more cozy. It seems like the coziest square, but it's tactically flawed. White has a winning shot here. If you'd like to pause the video and spot it, feel free to do just that. Okay, here we go. The winning shot for Geary. His queen takes d6, so a move that was clearly overlooked. There is no queen takes rook because queen takes f5 is checkmate. So it is simply gone from here. Um, that was the big blunder in the game. We had king g5 as a follow-up. And now precision, the cleanest way forward not to take the bishop, but instead get to the fifth rank. We're told in chess the seventh rank is the prized rank. Well, over time, that changes. It's the fifth rank that is the prized rank here. Queen, king, let's get there. Also, after this check, king g2, notice what the rook is doing from d5, stopping ensuing checks. Okay, white is laser focused on this f5 point. It will collapse. Rook takes f5. King h4, queen g3, and this game goes no further. Black resigns. This was the game that propelled Geary to victory in this tournament. Uh, he overtook the, the first spot with this win. This is a very clean approach. If the game continued, queen takes queen, knight takes queen. We have this mate threat on h5, and there isn't really a great way uh, to stop that. For example, bishop here, there can be rook takes pawn, and now there's knight, knight f5 mate threat. And the only way to stop it are moves like rook takes pawn or rook to f4. You know, but now we're just losing the exchange. And white has two pawns as well. Some other line is this one right here. It's kind of funny. After rook c5, white could say, I'm not taking you, you're taking me. <laughs> Move b4. Rook takes rook would be met with knight takes rook, and then the bishop will fall. Okay, well, after queen g3, this game goes no further. Black simply resigns. So a very nice game by Geary, very nice positional 
play in this one. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape on this. And we could see just how smooth it was until the very end. He had five king choices, uh, five king moves, and unfortunately picked the wrong one. Stepping up to g6 was the big blunder. At the end of the day, 97% accuracy for Geary, 87 for Team Black. Anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.